Hello everyone and welcome to another Blender tutorial. In this one I'm going to focus more on the actual compositing in Blender of your scene. Okay, and this matters a lot because, well, just pressing render isn't enough anymore. Okay, it just isn't. You can create beautiful renders, but there's always compositing that can make everything look much better. Alright, so for this, I'm going to set up a very simple scene, and you can follow along if you want here. Let's create a plane like that, and let's go in edit mode and extrude our back face, select our back edge, Control B to bevel this, tap, shade smooth. Let's move our cube up so it's at the floor there, let's move to cycles and GPU, and let's go into rendered view, and let's set our camera to be nice and close to that cube, and something like that, and let's move it a bit closer so our background is filled as well, something like this. Right, and let's scale this up in the Y direction and control B around our camera environment so we can see what we're doing. So let's say um, we want to do some compositing here, right? And I'm, I'm not doing this with a fancy scene because I want to show you what things do as well. Um, and we can now just denoise this as well, okay, while we're at it. So to create some nice lights, let's just add an environment here real quick in the world settings. Color or change that bulb to environment texture and open up an HDRI you have lying around or download one from Polyhaven. All is fine. Something like that. And let's delete our light in the scene as well. And let's open up a new tab, set to shader editor, set to world. And then we can just press Ctrl T on our HDRI in order to rotate it around, right? And to create a better kind of lighting scene. Something that looks more interesting than what it was before. I'm just gonna go with something like this. Looks quite alright. And let's just make our background a different color so they don't blend as much. A bit darker perhaps. Or even set this to a nice color. <laughs> Why not, you know? And make our cube a nice color too. Let's make this nice and contrasting colors or, you know... And let's rotate this a tiny little bit so we get more light as well. Something like that. So how do we composite? Well, if you set this window to your compositor and um, there, we can enable the usage of nodes. And I'm going to select my cube and actually delete it and use a sphere instead. And that way we're just going to be able to get a bit more reflections and stuff on it as well so let's go with that so now compositing if i hide my menu we get render layers connected to a composite window layer as well and that means that we're now using a compositing okay and anything we do in between here is going to affect your results your composite results which basically is your render Right, if I render this image and let's set our um, render to 32 samples here. If I render this, you won't be able to see the actual render process. Now to see what changes you're making, this doesn't really result in any changes. We can do two things. We can either enable backdrop here and your image will appear as a background, right? Or you can use, and if this doesn't happen, by the way, just, you know, Ctrl Z or Ctrl Shift click on an image and Ctrl Z it usually resets everything and it will work. Or you can use your camera compositing to, well, click on this little button at the top right there and click on the compositor, camera or always. All right. And now if you actually increase the contrast, you can see what is happening there in the left. Um, so right here. We can Ctrl Shift click on the actual brightness and contrast node to see what that looks like. So now we have it on both places. All right. Now zooming in and out is a bit of um of of a of a chaos kind of factor here in the viewport. It's not just scrolling that will zoom in and out of your nodes, but if you actually want to zoom in and out on your backdrop image, you press V and Alt V. All right. So V zooms out. Alt V zooms in so remember that i usually have to look that up every once in a while because i simply forget so brightness and contrast that is one that i use quite a lot to well get a bit more contrast in my actual object all right um something like that we can change the brightness as well 
um, not not too much. Okay, so we can play around with that and control shift or sorry, just shift right mouse dragging your mouse will actually create a nice little line that connects the lines into a single bulb. And then we can, for example, use shift A, a hue saturation node as well to crank up, for example, a bit of a hue value. If I want my ball to be more reddish, which I like, we can set that to be in the hue. We can crank up the saturation to make everything look more nice, right? And we can crank up the value if we want the in general image to be lighter as well and crank it down to, well, lower that. So that is a node that works very nicely as well. Now, another one I use quite a lot is the curves, right? RGB curves. And the RGB curves is basically going to do the curves in Photoshop, right? So we can crank up the high values, the light values, for example, or we can crank down the low values and that basically adds a bit more of contrast in your scene as well. Now you can set this to standard or film-like, right? Whichever one you prefer. Um, I don't really notice that much of a, of a change, I suppose. Um, but this is just one of the things you can use as well. All right, that's already a nice little start. So if we mute all of this, we go from this to that to just more contrast, all right? Isn't that beautiful? Now, the fun part is that we can also add glare to images, right? And that usually was quite easy to achieve in Eevee with Bloom, right, in the render settings. But nowadays, we usually have to do that with glare in, um, well, at least in cycles, right? I think the new Eevee also has to do that with glare, but I'm not 100% sure. So how do we do that? Well, Shift A and find a glare node, and we can drag this in between there. Now, another one that is a lot of fun to use is glare. And for glare to work, it is nice to have a lot of light in your scene, for example. So let's um, add a light with Shift A, light point, for example, and move that closer to your object to get a nice, like, shiny point here. Just like that. Now, you may notice that this is not changing in the actual render because this is not a live view this is based on your actual render so if you make a change like this where you add for example a new kind of light in your scene um, or do something else so you have to re-render your image in order for that to update as well okay, so that is just something you have to keep in mind images in your scene your actual compositing in the camera view will of course change but this will only change if you actually um, render it out again your backdrop Okay, so hit Shift A and fight a glare node. There we go. Streak looks quite interesting, but I usually go to a bloom or a fog glow, and you can change the settings in here as well. You can lower the size, um, for example, of this bloom. Bloom is a very straightforward one, but you can just add a bit more of that shininess, right? If we mute this versus if we unmute this, um, and you can set the threshold as well. So what points will actually have that bloom and which not. So the higher you set this, the more light is needed to create a bloom effect. As you can see, um, the higher I crank this, the less areas will have that bloom effect, only the very light areas. And the mix will mix between your original image and the processed image. Minus one will be your original, one will be your fully processed, which is only your glare, for example. Now you can use this, of course, to mix it together with your original, right? So let's say we like the look of this bloom, but we want to control, for example, how it looks together with our original image. And um, so instead of using this mix node, we can hit shift A and find a mix color and set this to the second, set your original to the first, and now we can actually mix up our image, right? So if I set this to 0.5, it will result basically in setting this to zero. But we can, of course, set this to, let's say, lighten as well, right? And that way we can control how strong that actual bloom effect is. And then you can start layering multiple glare nodes like this. Bloom it. Let's say this one, Ctrl Shift click. I want a larger size, but I want it less strong. We can just add another lighten effect. Set this to the second one. And let's delete our viewer node. And then we can control how much of that second one is going to be cranked in there as well, right? So that is basically how that works. So you can create a very nice shine effect. So if I now mute both of my glare additions, this is our original image and this is our glared image. Looks quite interesting. And then if you want, you can even add a third one that we set here, there, beautiful. And then we can actually Ctrl Shift click and drag this a bit more to the left 
perhaps. And set the threshold to be a little bit lower as well. And let's actually set this to one. And then we can add another light and, and we can crank this in there as well, right? And that way we can just smoothen this transition a little bit more, all right? As you can see, we can just crank up that value ever so slightly. So that already is a nice way of adding some glare. Interesting. Now, there's more we can do. Don't worry about it. So let's drag all of this to the right. I usually want glare to be my latest addition, I suppose. So hold shift, right mouse, and drag a line here. And move that to the right. And we can actually already use something else that is used a lot, right? So that is something that has to do with your actual camera lenses in real life. And one of these things you notice when a camera picture is taken is that it has a bit of lens distortion, all right? Um, because the lens, of course, distorts your imagery, imagery wow, um, ever so slightly, which means that you're going to have a little bit of distortion in your final image. So let's hit Shift A and find a lens distortion. There we go. And I usually just go ahead and crank up these values and see what they do. Right? So it works here as well. Um, but you can see it is actually, let's press V, it's actually distorting our image a little bit. All right. And that is a lot of fun to play around with. Now, usually when this happens, you're going to crank the corners of your image inwards a bit, which means you just have to enable fit here, right? Fit, not fit. And with a sphere, it's a bit hard to see. Um, but if you actually have a very nice scene going on, then we can actually use this lens distortion very nicely to re represent a bit of that actual real-life lens distortion. Dispersion works the same way. It adds a bit of that... Um, well, you can see it happening in the shadows more, right? If I set this to zero, we have no dispersion really. But if I add more and more of this actual dispersion, and let's decrease the distortion a bit. It's a bit of playing around with both. But we actually get some of that more of a kind of a rainbow effect, I guess, in our image as well. You can see it happening at the corners of our shadows here as well and it just adds a bit more of that camera effect i suppose right and it actually can look quite filmic um, if you do it right now don't overkill that of course but now at least you know what is going on right how this works so that is a nice way to have as well now what else can we do there's a lot we haven't touched on yet but let's just focus on one more thing and that is render passes okay and that is a way or render render layers as well i mean there's a lot to go over um but let's go to the output here and actually no we need to the, go to the view layers and we have passes all right um and that contains our um, general pass list and our light pass list as well now what does this do well um, your Z index, I'm not going to go in over the entire list. Um, the, the, the Z is not that important in this case. But the mist is something you're going to be using a ton. A ton, a ton, a ton. And the mist pass basically gives you the um, a black and white filter um, on based on the distance to the camera. And I'm not, I'm not talking about an actual filter, but it's going to be giving your image values from black to white based on how far it is to the camera. Okay, so to enable this, you can just click on it and you will see it here appearing in the list. Missed. Now, to actually get this to work, we need to re-render. So now we can actually start using that mist layer we have here. So drag that out to, let's say, a mix. And let's set this to zero and Control shift click on that mix node. Right, so it won't work in your camera view, but right behind here, you will actually see what that mist pass looks like. All right, so things that are closer to your camera will be more... Uh, more black and things that are farther away will get more white right and you can control where that cutoff is easily with shift a a color ramp for example like that now if you want more mist in your scene you can just crank this up to the right and that white value will get closer as you can see if you want more not mist right so you can just crank black more to the right you can set this to b spline if you want a smoother transition right and crank that bit more to the right you can see it happen as well right so let's just keep this at ease and let's crank our whites a bit closer i suppose uh, maybe b spline looks better let's see 
our cutoff is quite hard um, simply because we have <laughs> a rounding here in our um, in our background. So this is basically the only kind of smoothening part that happens because this is the farthest our image will go back. Our um, our missed pass, which is fine. And we can just try something like this first, right? So we will now try to mix this back in um, based on this missed pass. Now, where do we apply this? Well, I like to apply this at the start after my color corrections, I suppose. Um, perhaps before. Let's do it before. Um, I switch between before and after, but make sure to do it at least before your distortions and your glares, I suppose. Um, so let's crank that in there. So delete this. Move this a bit down, and let's hit Shift A, find a mixed color, and excuse me, crank your color ramp into the factor, for example, and set this to be lighten or screen, All right? And Control Shift click on your latest lighten tab, and let's also go to render view here to see what is going on, All right? So we have lighten now, which means that every um, light color here, every white color, is going to be um, amplified a bit, um, but we can set this to mix if we really want to create a mix, um, a mix mist effect, pretty much. All right. So let's see how that looks. There we go. Let's Control Shift Clear and click here as well. And now we can mix our original image with a white secondary color, for example, um, that controls the mist. So the closer I take this image, the more mist we're going to have as well. Right, and you have to find your own kind of cutoff there, something that you want, something like that already looks quite interesting. And now you can control the color of your mist, for example, as well. Right, if you want more of a blue as mist, or more of like a greenish background fog, you can make that happen as well. Right, it's quite interesting to use. Um, so that is one way to do that. So just keep in mind you're getting a black and white mask, and you can use that to control what your image looks like. All right, so if we want more of that mist, we can crank this up and crank this up more. You can see the bottom of that sphere is getting a bit more in mist as well, um, which actually adds a very cool look to our object, in my opinion. Okay, um, so keep keep just keep that in mind, right? Adding mist in your, your scene can add a lot of um, size perception as well, right? The larger an object is, um, the higher a skyscraper is, the more it will usually disappear into that um, ambience, right? Into the atmospheric kind of fog, okay? So that means that the larger an object is, the, the, the fun, more fun it is to really play around with your mist layer. So I hope you enjoyed this in some way. I hope it learned you a bit about compositing, how to set it up, what you can use, at least the most common tools in the box like mist, glares, lens distortions, um, and of course your basic kind of color control. Um, and now one more that I'll actually tell you, a little secret, is that you can go to your render settings and all the way at the bottom you're gonna have a color management tab which you can actually tweak to your liking as well. Okay, now keep in mind that usually when you use for example an environment and you set this to be a sky texture, it is going to be way too bright almost all the times. Now, when you just lower the strength of your sun or the intensity, it's not going to be a natural way of decreasing that because this sun, this sky is actually made to be representative of real life. So we can actually lower the brightness in the exposure in the color management in the render tab, like lower your exposure, and it will usually give you more natural values. All right, so this doesn't work with the um, compositing we did, which means compositing is light dependent, a lot environment dependent as well. Um, but this is just a little trick, right? Lower your exposure or heighten it. It's um, it's a natural way of really going about it. Um, so we can, for example, also change the look, right? For example, if you want a bit more contrast overall in the entire, um, well, an entire Blender 3D viewport, I suppose, we can just set this to, for example, medium high contrast, right? And you'll get more contrast in your actual viewport as well. So that is a fun way to go about it. You can change your view transformation. AGX is quite a nice one 
um, as a standard use. I'm not sure if it's default or if I just set that to that. Let's reset this to default. I think it's default. But you can set this to filmic as well. And it's going to change more of that color look, right? Filmic, fast color. It's actually quite interesting. Raw. Um, interesting. AGX works nice. And filmic works quite cool as well. Okay. And then you can just render out your image. Render image so if you like that please do leave a like a comment subscribe we would enjoy any one of these and then we'll see you in the next one cheers